Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available at Amazon right now. Hello everyone, this is Ranger Rob from the Ranger Rob Country Living. I want to welcome you to the show and today I thought I'd go through a list that I found uh, of the top 10 best animals for homesteading and it was actually published by uh, Survival S Sullivan and uh, I don't necessarily agree with all of it but um, it's definitely a good foundation for starting a homestead. Now homestead basically is a, a place to try to be more self-sufficient so uh and uh a lot of it has to do you know having gardening is a big part of that but deciding what kind of animals you might want you may not want any but uh, uh what we thought we'd do is just go through the, the the top 10 animals for homesteading and you can kind of decide what would work best for you also uh keeping consideration that homesteading is also another way of prepping and another way of prepping is considering that possibly we could have a big event where, uh, you know, uh, you might want some of these animals for that big event. So without further ado, let's go through the list. Number one on the list is poultry. And of course that would be things like chickens and chickens and ducks and geese and game birds. If you really wanted them, I used to do game birds. Uh, there's all kinds of different types of poultry. Um, some breeds lay eggs daily, like chickens. Uh, some breeds lay eggs up to about three years. And a lot of folks will retire their chickens <laughs> by then and turn them into, uh, well, give them a new home in their freezer. Let's just put it that way. So uh, chickens are uh, great for eggs. They're great for eating. They're also good for using um, uh, on the property. Actually, if you do some free ranging or what they call um, uh, chicken tractors, you can move them through your property and actually help uh, maintain your, your, your fields better. Uh, they have a lot of great purposes and they eat just about everything. So let's move on. All right, moving on to number two. Number two would be pigs. That's right. What they say is pigs are an excellent source of meat. They're, um, they're not too difficult to raise and they will eat just about anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so true. Uh, one of the things you want to kind of keep in mind is uh, the saying I c continuously hear about pigs is it's they're going to get loose. <laughs> they just manage to get loose. They break fences and stuff. But the big thing is they like to dig. Now, I've uh, watched many different homestead channels and uh, some like to dig more than others. Some can really damage the land and some can just kind of do the top of it. So anyway, uh, keep in consideration there's different types of pigs out there. Do your research and find out what would work best for you. Do you want, well, really if you're going to have pigs you can have them either for breeding or for meat and that's really the best decisions uh, that i've heard of of what you could do with pigs so number two pigs let's move on to the next one all right number three is goats that's right goats <laughs> when it comes to the milk most people will choose cow's milk however if you want to be practical goats may be a better choice why well compared to cows they're actually more affordable um, and require a lot less space. <laughs> and that's a very true subject. Um, goats can provide you two year supply of milk and give birth to two or three kids at a time. So uh, they do reproduce pretty well. Uh, the other thing is when the milk, when the, you can't get milk anymore, uh, a lot of people will turn their uh, goats into, well, let's say give them a new home into the freezer also. So uh, uh, the most important thing it's mentioning here is to make sure that you pick out the right breed. Um, first of all, with any of these animals, make sure you determine what the purpose is for the animals. Do you want the animals for milk? Do you want them for helping graze your land? Do you want them for meat? Um, so if you decide to get goats, do your homework, figure out what breed you want and what's best for your homestead. Moving on to number four, uh, sheep. <laughs> yes, sheep. So just like goats, uh, they don't, they won't take up a lot of space, 
and they can be left to eat grass. We, and they love to eat weeds, which is one of the reasons why I, I actually had some sheep. However, the kind of, um, when I got sheep, I got Jacob's sheep. And uh, I, I actually uh, tried to get them to see if they'd eat the cheat grass in our area. And uh, no, they didn't. They ate everything but. However, if we keep them in a smaller area, uh, because of their hoofs, they'll actually trample it down pretty good. Um, one of the things is that they're easy to take care of. Um, and they give birth up to twice, twice a year, up to three lambs, which I didn't know that, um, for each birthing event. Uh, this would enable you to uh, increase your flock over time quite quickly. So uh, they also say when you raise a uh, sheep, you will need to build a big fence around the perimeter to keep the sheep in and the predators out. Now, number five, uh, when you look at animals, not all animals are for eating, but uh, the number five he suggests is dogs. Of course, dogs. Um, when you have a homestead, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, I have two dogs. I have a German Shepherd and a Chocolate Lab. Uh, they are definitely your early warning system. They hear things that you just don't, <laughs> just don't hear. Um, they can protect your animals. Um, and of course, protect your home. So uh, uh, it's important. They say one of the things most suitable dogs for um, are the large breeds, such as rock, um, Rockwellers, um, German Shepherds, Great Danes, and Terriers, which aren't the biggest dogs, but they're, <laughs> they're yappy little guys. And uh, anyway, uh, oh, with our animals here, um, what I do like is they, they actually sometimes are nurturing to some of the animals that you keep on the farm. Uh, I had a germ, uh, a golden retriever that when we had a game bird farm and, and I had chuckers, I actually had chuckers get loose. And um, actually the <laughs> golden retriever would find them, which you would think they'd kill them, but she'd catch them and carry them and bring them back to the cages and hurt. It was amazing. So uh, anyway, um, yeah, a very important thing, do you, uh, do you want an animal? But you also got to remember, they're carnivores and you need to, you know, they're, it's another mouth to feed on the homestead. So you have to weigh it out. Do you need a dog? Do you need someone to keep the predators away? Um, what kind of dog would you want? And um, I tend to go with a larger breed. Um, our German Shepherd has really good hearing and our um, Chocolate Lab is a uh, uh, very aggressive in uh, letting us know that there's strangers here. So anyway, um, yeah, dogs. For our next best animal to have on your homestead, believe it or not, number six is, and this one threw me a little bit, but actually it's a great idea. Uh, most of you guys might, well, hopefully you guys have water sources or basically a pond. Um, catfish is the next choice. And I've never raised catfish and I've never really thought about it, but it's a great idea. Now I've heard many people that have ponds on their homestead will put oh, uh, bass in them or different or perch or uh, I've, my father had a place up in Squim, Washington. He actually had it planted with trout. Um, but yeah, catfish, they say, uh, doesn't, they don't need large spaces and they grow very fast. It'd be a great source for food. So. I don't have much more to add to that other than the fact it's a great idea if you have a pond. And I guess the other thing would be what region you live in. Um, I, I kind of assume catfish can live in a lot of different environments. So uh, I look into that. If you have a pond, catfish might be your answer for a great food source. All right, moving on to number seven. Number seven, what do you think it is? <laughs> you bet, rabbits. Rabbits are actually a great choice. However, they're super cute. That's the problem I have. So rabbits are good for, one of the main thing is their droppings are a miracle. <laughs> they are wonderful for gardens. And the thing is, is you can use them immediately. Unlike chickens, when you use their uh, droppings, uh, it has a lot of nitrogen in it and can actually, it needs to be toned down. So you need to let it sit for time. But rabbits, um, just like I believe goats and sheep are the same way, you can put their manure into your gardens immediately and it doesn't hurt them and won't hurt your plants. It'd be uh, anyway, but you can have pets, you know, pe um, rabbits for pets 
and uh, just be aware that they they breed fast um, and just use their manure for your gardening. And if I got rabbits, that's probably what I would do. Um, but they also uh, are raised for meat too. And it, it's a great source because they multiply so fast. Uh, you would have a regular meat source for your homestead in case you know it had troubles. And um, you can combine the whole thing where you can collect their uh, droppings, uh, amend your soil, and you, know, uh, you can keep a couple of breeders that would be kind of your pets and then also not get too close to uh, the ones that you want to have for meat. So uh, rabbits are a great source and they're quiet. That's big. <laughs> Depending where you live and where you're homesteading, um, um, you got to keep in consideration noise too. There may be neighbors depending on how you, know, you might have a small little homestead where houses are fairly close you would want animals are fairly quiet so um, like if you're doing chickens I would definitely try to get just hens um, unless you're trying to actually breed them then you want a rooster but you know what a rooster does and so anyway keep in mind if you want to be quiet and also if you know trouble is a, you know, a problem and we lost our you know, our grid or something you uh, having animals that are kind of quiet would kind of help let you kind of stay in the shadows and that might be something to consider so rabbits was number seven next is number eight now this one is one i'm intrigues me and i i'd like to get into it but i want to get trained right and it takes quite a while to do it and that's raising bees and uh if first of all if you think you can get over the fact of working with bees and uh, some of us, you know, we see one bee and we start doing the, um, the girly dance and, uh, and screaming like little girls. <laughs> I'm talking about men. <laughs> anyway, um, bees, uh, interesting cr critters. One is be great for, if you have a gar garden, having bees nearby would definitely help with pollination. Um, the other thing about honey is it, uh, is very healthy and has a lot of medicinal purposes to it. Benefits, you might say. And it's great for energy, but it also stores well. Um, and it's used, uh, you can use it as a sweetener for a lot of things uh, that you're eating. So uh, anyway, uh, they're very easy to uh, raise. They're not as dangerous as you think. And uh, uh, a lot of folks, um, the big thing with bees, though, you also want to check your community to find out it's okay to have them in certain areas. So anyway, bees, raising bees, getting honey. Uh, I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be interesting. And uh, two, uh, honey is an amazing product and it stores forever. Okay, moving on to number nine, that would be horses. No, we're not talking about horses for eating, <laughs> but they're saying, and it's actually when you think about it, in a post SHTF kind of situation uh, and cars aren't available, you've suddenly got some transportation that a lot of people don't have. So uh, uh, horses are uh, are good for, you know, uh, obviously traveling, um, but they are also are very expensive to keep. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, in the United States, people don't raise horses for eating or anything like that. But uh, like a dog, it's going to be a uh, responsibility to feed them. They like grass. They uh, need property and uh, you need to uh, also, if you want to ride them, you're going to have to uh, take care of them um, and actually ride them and train them uh, to uh, that they'd be helpful to you. Uh, to uh, to me, a horse is an entertainment thing or, or like a dog. Um, is if you're going to have a horse, I always say, I, I see people get horses and they just sit in their fields and they don't exercise them. They don't ride them. They just have them as pets. And I, I think keeping a, a horse, especially intelligent horses, busy and learning things and riding them and giving them a purpose, it, um, make their lives more complete. And it'll, in return, you have a very special pet. Uh, or special animal uh, horses and horse people are <laughs> very close let's put it that way and 
if there's trouble uh, and maybe there's no transportation, you've got a horse. Uh, but also remember, there's quite the expense owning a horse. So uh, that's something for you to think about. Would that be best for your homestead? And that takes us to our final number 10. And this is just like horses. And then uh, number 10 would be cattle. Cattle are a lot of responsibility. Uh, they're a big animal. They require a lot of food. They uh, hope, you know, it also depends on what kind of land you have. Do you have grass fields? Are you in a high desert like I am? Uh, you need to understand the expense of owning one and uh, keeping them healthy is a big thing. And a lot of people also raise cattle for a couple of reasons. One would be milk, of course. Uh, the second part would be for meat. Um, if I was to raise cattle and I kind of like to, but it's not going to happen. Um, I would uh, definitely raise them for meat. Um, milking, uh, you know, there's a lot of neat things you can do with the milk and it, and there's a lot of procedures to go through and calving at the same time um, uh, to remember that if you're going to actually use the dairy side of milk. And uh, however, there's some great things you can do with the milk. That, uh, and uh, if you like whole milk, man, it's a way to go. And you can make your own creams. You can make your own cheeses, make your own butter. It's amazing. So you need to weigh just how, I would say, how far you are away from civilization, whether you'd want your own cow or not, um, when it comes to dairy. Um, to me, I like the fact of finding a farmer that does do just cattle and then go in partnership and, and, and actually buy my cattle from a farmer and then have it processed. To me, in my particular homestead situation is the best choice for our homestead. I um, just, I wouldn't want to raise cattle here. And in the particular area I'm at, I actually cannot have cattle. Um, I can have all, pretty much all the other animals on this list. Um, I can't have pigs either in this region, but I don't want either one. Like I said, I'd rather go out and find a co-op to work with and get my animals um, taken care of in a really good facility, really good fields. And I like mine grass fed, but I also like them um, grain fed at the end too. So, um, <clears throat> and that's something you need to know if that's something you want. And of course there's the organic versus grain fed type thing. So you need to keep that in mind, but yep, cattle was number 10. So that concludes our list of the top 10 animals for homesteading. You gotta keep in mind, first of all, how much space do you have? Uh, space is gonna be important of what kind of animals you choose to raise. Second, um, how much responsibility do you want? Uh, keep in mind certain animals are easy, other animals are a little bit harder. Obviously, when you get into horses and cattle, you're talking about a lot of work. Um, a lot of people say the pigs are easy, to, but I kind of think that's kind of up there too. That's kind of in the mid range as far as animals to keep. So keep in mind what's best for your area. If you live in an urban area uh, or if you're way out in the country, those will also be an impact of what kind of animals you'd want. But remember, I know times are different and a lot of people are, you know, not used to living out in the country and stuff, but everything we're talking about as far as raising animals and, and raising animals for meat and things like that is a natural way of doing things. And um, I guess the first thing before you decide to do meat animals for any reason whatsoever is go to places and there's farms and places out there that will allow you to come in and be a, an intern in a sense and see if it's something you can handle. Not everybody can handle that. Uh, I've met a lot of people that get lots of animals and turn out they can't kill them. And uh, unfortunately, that's the reality of producing your own meat. So keep in mind, is that something you can do and is it practical for your homestead? I hope you enjoyed this list. Uh, we're going to move on and call it a day here. And uh, if you have any comments or you have any other animals that we may not have had on this list, in the comments below, please add them in there and then give us your opinion on each type of animal that you may have had in your uh, experiences. Was it easy? 
Was it hard? Did you need a lot of space? Did you do it in a little room? Little space. I'd love to find out. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.